Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command, World War II, World at War. In our last episode, we continued fighting the campaign in Russia. Uh, we launched some tanks forward to try and threaten the German advance, but we knew they would die and lose and all of that jazz. The Germans finally came into contact with our uh, uh, Dnieper line, if you will, the river uh, running north to south here in this portion of Russia. And they did do some damage. They, they did take the city of Kyrgyzstan. They did pretty badly beat up an armored train. But they haven't fully pushed across the river yet. They did get one unit here, the first corps of Hungary, across the river. So they have one beachhead there. Uh, and in the south, they've got a beachhead near Kyrgyzstan. Although in no place have they actually broken uh, the line yet. Um, uh, fully anyway. Meanwhile, in the north, uh, they have taken Riga, which I guess is another bridgehead across the river, while we've driven some mechanized troops across the river and a bit of a counterattack. These troops are not really intending to survive long on the other side of the river. They're more or less cannon fodder uh, to hold the position as long as practically possible uh, so that uh, we can try and give our times in the rear a little bit more time to uh, build up their defenses. My understanding is the first two turns of the invasion of Russia give the Germans a massive advantage in their attacks on Soviet forces. Those two turns are concluded, and the next turn will be the third turn, so I believe that means the Germans will lose a lot of their benefits, and the sting, hopefully, will be taken out of their attack, although they're still superior to us, and they can certainly break out. I think the, mo the area where they seem to be the strongest and have the best chance of breaking out is north here near Riga, specifically the city hex to the northeast of Riga. Uh, the, fort the cities down here, or the troops down here, uh, while uh, vulnerable to attack, are all also in fortifications, and so a direct attack would seemingly have more chance of success across the plains here. Also, they're across the river over there, whereas these fortifications are all behind the river, uh, which should give some benefits to the defenders as well. Nonetheless, we've reinforced the area with a heavy tank unit and a cavalry unit uh, to try and plug the gap in the event there is a breakthrough there. Uh, if we look uh, along the center of the line, there hasn't been a ton of uh, link up with German and Soviet troops there. There's a little bit here to the west of Orsha, uh, but they haven't gotten across the river yet. Uh, and in the one area where there is no river here to the west of Vitebsk, we've only seen one unit here. We also have a little bit of help here with some marshes and bad terrain, which make German attacking uh, more difficult. Uh, and then in the south here, we've got a large bulk of German troops here, which are certainly pressing against the Dnieper line uh, and could break out there at any time, although they're a little bit south of Moscow, so it's not a direct line to the Soviet capital. Uh, and we do have some reserves here. You can see even if they knock out these front units, we've got uh, a second line of troops in a couple of places along here uh, to try and minimize the German chances there. Meanwhile, the war in other places is going a little bit better. We just destroyed the Africa armored unit, and now there seems to only be one infantry unit and one artillery unit here in the desert. That's all we can see anyway. Uh, my hope is next turn we can reduce Benghazi, and that will allow us to uh, continue pressing west uh, to try and take all of Italian Libya. That's the objective. Meanwhile, in eastern Africa, we continue to struggle to reduce the Italian forces near Mogadishu. Uh, we don't have supply. We don't have adequate supply. We don't have adequate forces. We don't have any means to increase our supply anytime soon. And so what that basically means is that we're attacking small troops with basically no supply. What I am trying to do is to reduce the supply of the Italian troops in Mogadishu by sending some naval assets here across the port to reduce the port's supply, which will then affect the infantry troops supply, and that will hopefully help. Um, in addition to that, if we look at the Chinese front uh, in Asia, we've launched a successful counterattack sweeping the Japanese eastward. Uh, we've retaken Canton, Amoy, we've retaken Hanan Island and Haiku and Pakoi, uh, and we are driving east uh, into these uh, mountainous terrain uh, just to the west of Fuchou. It's unlikely that we're going to break the Japanese back here anytime soon, uh, but it is something that uh, we've had quite a bit of success down there in the south. In the north, we've had less success. We are sort of fighting over the city of Chengsha, or sorry, Chengchao, uh, and we have some special forces troops there that may get destroyed next turn. Uh, we've also surrounded a Japanese army at Pao Tao, but there's some question on whether we'll actually be able to... Uh, can we switch these guys? There's actually some question on whether we'll be able to keep them surrounded or not. If we can, we might be able to destroy another Japanese army in China, which would be great. But at the end of the day, the Japanese have far superior forces to us. 
The Americans are not yet in the war yet, and the British are largely content to kind of be bottled up on their home islands, uh, and that's the situation right now. It actually would be interesting. I wonder if we can send British troops to Russia. Can you do that? We'd probably be operating without supply, would be my guess. That's how Japanese troops in German territory worked in India in my Axis game. So that probably would discourage that. But in any event, it's August of 41. We're moving toward the winter. We're really hoping that the winter will crush the Germans in Russia so that we can uh, kind of consolidate things there uh, and really build things up. But that's the situation right now. We've already moved our troops for this turn. That's enough of an intro. Let's go ahead and see what this turn has in store for us. And to all of you watching on the stream, hello to you as well. Glad you guys could tune in. I know I, I haven't played this game on stream as much. We have played it on the channel a fair bit, but not on stream. I was going to record probably two episodes or about an hour of, of uh, this uh, game here tonight. Uh, and I figured, why not stream it and share it with you guys? So we'll go ahead and end the turn, and we'll see what the Germans have in store for us. Uh, the U.S. oil embargo is hitting Japanese morale. That's good for us. It should also hit the Japanese economy. Uh, meanwhile, also, by the way, guys, let me know if the uh, if the audio gets crackly at all like it was last night. Uh, let's see here. Red Army Headquarters. The British have proposed that we join them in invading Persia to overthrow the pro-Axis Shah. Their plan is that uh, we then divide the country between us, uh, with the British having the oil field at Madan Naftun and the port of Bandar Mashar. The invasion would only cost 100 MPPs and be divided equally between both countries. Would you approve the British plan to invade? Uh, saying yes will also provide the USA with an opportunity to send supplies to us via Persia to sustain our war effort. The conquest of Persia is essential if we wish to uh, wish the U.S. to send supplies through our country, so it's recommended to say yes. But again, this is another one of those decisions that feels like flavor text because there's no reason that you would ever not do it. British and Soviet forces launch a joint operation Continents. Persia surrenders. Hey, look, the Red Army just grew. And the British got a chunk of Persia as well. Hey, Idle Jern. Franco sends the Blue Division to support the Axis. Did the Spanish send volunteers to join the invasion of Russia, really? Is that a historical event, or is this a surprise? Pierre Laval is shot and injured by Paul Collette at Versailles. I don't know who any of those people are. Anti-tank weapon level 2. India's developing infantry weapon level 2. Franco did send volunteers. Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's see here. India's economy, 199. China collects 158. Soviet Union, 480. To, uh, 216 for the US and 272 for the British. They had a reputation of being lazy and drunks. Interesting. Super Chacho, I did not know that. But also hard fighters. Okay. Lazy, drunk, but hard fighters. Okay. Interesting. Feels like an Irish stereotype working right there. All right, so Japanese carriers continuing to hit our special forces there in Cheng Chow, uh, and they're probably going to destroy them next turn. Meanwhile, our carriers off the coast of North Africa uh, are being shadowed by Italian submarines, although they're not doing much damage. Meanwhile, German destroyers uh, advancing, or maybe trying to withdraw. I'm trying to remember. I did t attack some Ger German naval assets in the uh, in the Baltic. <laughs> the Germans said that the Spanish were like uh, the Russians with their consumption of alcohol and how hard they fought. Interesting. The Azure Division. Then it became a regiment. Uh, then ordered to Spain, but became SS troops. So they didn't get. They were ordered back to Spain, but they didn't leave, and they became SS SS, SS troops. Interesting. German uh, battleship there took a little damage against our sub here, withdrawing from the Gulf of Finland. I'm pretty sure we can at least destroy that uh, German um, uh, destroyer up there, by the looks of it. Meanwhile, you can see here German tactical bombers hitting these mechanized troops of ours. We had some interceptors that did a little bit of damage to them, but not much. The Chinese Corps that's cutting off the Japanese at Pao Tau there in the north uh, is unfortunately uh, very weakened by Japanese air attacks. So presumably uh, the Japanese, if they try, will be able to break out here just by attacking that army to the west. And that army uh, that is cut off will then be uh, brought back into supply. 
Meanwhile, a lot of air actions here. The, G the Germans destroy a mechanized unit entirely via the air, and the Japanese destroy that infantry corps of the Chinese entirely via air attacks. Shit. German armor sweeping forward here just to the south of Dniprov. You can see there they're attacking the city. Now, the city is to the west of the river of the Dnieper. And this is a little bit of a breakthrough. They did just destroy that core in the city. So that does mean there is a gap in our line based on where they attacked. It'll be interesting to see if they try and exploit it. Holy hell! The Germans attack a Russian core at Dagophilus. This is a fortification here. And they just obliterated them with ease! We didn't even... Oh, God, another hole opens up on our line. I expected to have some trouble in the north, but I didn't quite expect that, that double fortification with forts all around to be overrun quite so easily, as well as the forts to the west. So, again, attacking across the river into an urban territory didn't do anything for us. They're also launching some central attacks here against this Russian core. That core is fighting well but uh, getting worn down. At least a lot of German attacks are being used up on it. Meanwhile, we've got the Italian forces there in Russia uh, all engaged there as well. Another unit destroyed. This has not been a good day for the Red Army so far. There have been a few units that have fought well. The other units, not so much. Meanwhile, Greece's line is penetrated, and uh, they're about to, be, about to be knocked out of the war here. There's just a headquarters unit left in Athens. The British garrison unit to the north of Athens was destroyed. Oh boy. Japanese troops at Pautau interestingly try and attack out of there. Headquarter unit at Yankau getting attacked. Man, this is just total war. All out war, all along the front. Another Ch Russian unit destroyed as German armor advances out of Kiev. When will the pain stop? Someone make it stop! My principal hope is that, at the very least, the weather will slow the Germans down. I'm hoping the Axis stop attacking in the winter. We may have to fall back towards Smolensk. Um, Charcoal, Warplane is definitely a more detailed game than this. Honestly, when I play Strategic Command, it's because I want to play a World War II game that allows me to feel the sense of Blitzkrieg and mobile uh, movement being critical, while at the same time not requiring me to think too hard. Strategically, at like a 30,000 foot level, it does require a fair bit of thinking, but at the, the playing level, it doesn't, and uh, not as much anyway. And so I think War Plan is a little, it's a little bit more detailed. It definitely has uh, some more um, cerebral components to it. But the UI just isn't super clean, and it's not as enjoyable for me personally uh, to play. But I, I think each game is, is a little bit different and uh, appeals to a different uh, need or subset of what people uh, are, um, are uh, looking for. Wow! This is like when the uh, casualty sheets from World War II hit the newspaper and it's just like lists of names. Oh boy. Yeah, War Plan is also European theater only, but that's fine. I think if anything, the weakest part of this game is the, is the, is the way the Pacific the theater is modeled. I think the European theater fits better for this type of a game. In any event, the Ilor Mormutz armored train is destroyed. The third, oh, can't even, I can't even read through all of it before it just auto closes on me. George from New York, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the uh, Historical Gamers uh, classroom or whatever. I don't know. What the hell are we going to call this thing? Anyway, Greece is going to fall next turn. All we have left is a headquarter unit in Athens itself. So that's going to free up two or three more German units uh, to move to the Russian front. Uh, the Office of the Admiralty. Ad Albert uh, Victor Alexander. The Royal Navy is uh, recommissioning and refitting the following ships for active service, which will become available by late 1941, with most ships only ready by 42 and 43. The Royal Sovereign Battleship will be ready in December of 41. The Indomitable Carrier will be ready in February of 42. Hey, that just showed up in the Pacific in our War in the Pacific uh, series. 
Uh, the Truant Sub also just showed up in the Pacific in our series. February 42. The Hot Spur. Captain Horatio Hornblower in command. No, not that hot spur. Uh, Destroyer uh, command uh, will be ready in September of 42. The London and the Sussex, both heavy cruisers, ready in February of 43. And the Tally Ho submarine, ready in September of 43. Would you like, would you like to, yes, send these naval reinforcements as they become available to the Pacific, or keep them, no, near home islands uh, in the European theater? Notes. There are no additional notes for this event. Sure, send them to the Pacific. Uh, Combined Operations Headquarters, Admirals of the Fleet, Sir Roger Keyes. The Germans are enhancing their naval base at St. Nazarie for use by U-boats and possibly surface vessels too. We could attempt to seriously damage this naval base in a bold strike by placing or packing HMS Campbelldown full of explosives and sending it to St. Nazarie. At St. Nazarie, it will attempt to explode while wedged in the dock gates, hopefully destroying the port facilities. At the same time, HMS Campbelltown attacks St. Nazarie. Commandos will land to disrupt the enemy defenses. If successful, this operation could prevent the Germans from using the port for some time to come, uh, possibly permanently. Would you like to prepare Campbelltown for the raid against St. Nazarie for a cost of 20 MPPs? There's no additional comments. I don't really know, like, does it prevent them from commissioning ships? Because I don't know if the game really works that way, but I guess yes. The first tanks, the first Canadian tanks have arrived at Halifax. Meanwhile, the Royal, the Russians are getting some fighters, some badly needed fighters at that. All right, um, so our line is broken. Um, yeah. Are these guys low on supply? Like, I can counterattack some of these guys pretty effectively, apparently. Uh, I don't know what to do. I know one thing. Uh, let's move these fighters back to the rear. They need to rest and recover. This headquarters unit's going to fall back to Piskov, uh, to the, the city there. Um, our heavy tanks are going to counterattack the lead German corps here. We'll take a few casualties, but they'll, they'll counterattack anyway. These special forces will also counterattack these German troops here. And then our cavalry will swing south here and attack as well. All right. Uh, these infantry in this fortification here can counterattack. Nice. And so can these guys. We'll use our tactical bombers here. Hopefully they've got no escorts. Okay, never mind. But hey, they almost destroyed the, uh, the German troops there. Let's switch these guys out. Shattered. Huzzah! We drove back a German lead core. I'll take that as a positive result any day. All right, so we at least temporarily uh, blunted. Uh, we didn't. Let's be real. We didn't blunt anything. All we did was slightly delay the uh, the German advance. Just slightly. Uh, but hey, it's a good result nonetheless. Meanwhile, these engineers are busy. They're working on stuff. Can we tell them not to fortify? Pull them back to Vildebisk. There's no way the uh, the forts there are going to be built in time. Let's do this, actually. Let's attack this lead German army here. They're in rough terrain. They look like they might be slightly vulnerable. Move these guys forward. Move this division forward here as well. Switch these guys out. No. So apparently there's no reason to... Anyway, we blunted another German division. We didn't destroy it, but we at least inflicted heavy casualties on it. 70% casualties on the Paris army for the Germans. So again, trying to slow them a little bit by destroying or damaging some of their units so that they might feel the need to uh, reinforce, spend a turn reinforcing. That's the theory behind the attack. Also attack this lead Italian corps here. No damage suffered on our own end. These, these tanks need to upgrade to advanced tanks level 1. They're light tanks, but they'll be slightly better against the Germans, upgraded. Those troops are just going to not attack, because that feels like the smart thing to do. Actually, what we probably should do is let's pull these guys back to Gomel. Let's move this army forward here, so that we've got an army facing the Germans here. Um, and if they attack this core here to the south, at least they'll be moving through more difficult terrain off a main roadway. I want I want an army here on this roadway. Yes, we lose a little bit in entrenchments. But at the end of the day, um, I want to make sure that we limit the Germans' ability to, to like break out of our of our defensive lines here. 
So we've just we badly damaged an army here. We destroyed a core over here, although not without loss. And uh, we're kind of sitting around now in the center north to, to try and hold the line for another turn. We pulled the engineers that were working on fortifications out to Vitebesk. Those fortifications will not be complete. Um, this German armor seems difficult. Shit. They've got level 3 tanks already? Oh, no. Well, that ain't good. Um, they're probably going to break through here, so we're going to do this. We're going to move this army here. No, actually, no, we should move this army south of Konotop. We'll move this army... I don't know, because if I move them over here, what are the odds that they're just going to get... I mean, there's already a gap on our line over here. Let's move these guys here. Reinforce these guys to max. Gonna kind of try and reinforce some of these troops along the front line to withstand the German attack a little bit better. Um, yeah. So we've got kind of a couple of reserve units here. I guess we'll move this army to Konotop. So that way, again, if the German armor breaks through on the, the 11th Corps here, which they very likely will, we'll at least be able to have an army here behind them with a, a tank corps here that can attack on the flanks of the Germans. I don't think a level 1 tank is going to do much versus a, a level, level 3 German tank. Okay, so those guys have dug in and reinforced. Same for these guys. I don't think they're going to... Even if they destroy this unit, which is likely, they're going to have trouble advancing sideways across two multiple river hexes. So that should help at least. And we'll just kind of have to hang on there and hope. It's September, so they're not going to break out until the end of September, early October at the earliest, which means they basically are going to take the entire next turn trying to break through the line, even if they manage to break through, they'll only have the month of uh, November to exploit that breakthrough or the second half of October before the winter is going to hit. So I think Moscow is probably safe. I don't think in two attack turns... Oh yes, the lovely, lovely uh, Russian national anthem, Soviet national anthem. But I don't think there's any way that in the next two to three turns they'll get to Moscow. Because again, they'll have to spend at least one more full turn trying to break through. Um, so I think we've blunted the attack. The main question is of, uh, you know, how we're going to hold out long term. These troops in Sevastopol could be moved north or they could be moved east here toward Kirsch to protect the Caucasus. I think we'll move them to, to Kirsch uh, to protect the Caucasus. It does mean surrendering Sevastopol, but that'll at least draw some German troops south away from attacking any of our troops. Um, and I think I'm more okay with that. I'll we'll actually pull them east of Kirsch um, to protect that pass. And I don't think we've got any other troops we can bring forward, really. We've got the one garrison here. We could operate them to the front somewhere. Which, again, they'll just act as kind of a speed bump for any breakthrough. But that might actually be okay. We'll put them in front of Kharkov. Meanwhile, are there still troops in the east? No, we pulled everything out of there. So I don't have any other troops to spare. This is this is it. We will have some reinforcements that will be coming, I think, in the next month. So if we take a look at uh, the purchase section here and we go to production for the Soviets, um, we've got an army that will come in September of 41. So actually it will come in three days. And then we've got another tank unit here that will come in October. We've got a tank, a airborne and an army all coming in November and December. So we do have some reinforcements coming, uh, but we're also going to need to start buying reinforcements, right? Um, we still have 333 uh, points left. I'm a little tempted to try and invest a little bit more than advanced tanks. We're not researching much as the Soviets at the moment. Um, we only have level 1 tanks. I think we do need to research level 2 tanks 
as much as I hate to spend half my income on R&D when the Soviet front is, is not doing great, um, I do think we need to do that. We also are researching spy in, and intelligence, so that'll help. Um, infantry weapons are level 1. We probably want to get them to level 2, but I don't have money for that right now. So we'll spend 175 to advance to research advanced tanks. And then for our actual production this turn, which it doesn't leave us a whole lot of flexibility here, we're going to spend... Is that 150 on an army? We can actually afford... Can we afford that? Yeah, we can. We can afford a army with infantry weapons level 1. So we'll go ahead and purchase that. It'll take four months for it to be ready, but that'll be another army that the Soviets will get to draw. So that's the Soviet portion of this front. Yeah, well, Zhukov and his Siberian divisions. I kind of already moved the Siberian troops. All the troops that we're going to get are going to be our, uh, our new troops. All right, so they didn't liberate Pakoi or Pao Tao. Unfortunately for us, our troops attacking don't have much supply either. Shit. So I think we'll fall back here. All right, the north is in some serious trouble. We at least drove back those troops. I hate spending so much of my limited Chinese income on reinforcing headquarters units, but we did drive this core back. They're going to link back up with Pao Tao, but at least the army that's currently there is weakened. I need more troops. Doesn't have anybody have any troops left? Uh, we'll move that army into Cheng Chao to kind of keep the front going there. These guys are fortifying already, so they're working. Meanwhile, a huge portion of this front line in China has been evacuated? The Japanese have pulled a large number of troops south here to Nanjing to form a new defensive line. Our own troops don't have much in the way of supply, though. Nice! We can hit this army and inflict 50% casualties on it. Hit it again here. Then we'll swing these troops in with infantry weapon level 1. Shattered. We just destroyed another Japanese army here south near Nanjing, which I'm assuming is... Na is that Nanjing? We'll reinforce these guys or upgrade these guys. Okay. So that's a good result for us. I can't defeat these troops in front of Fuchou. In any event. Neuhauser. Uh, timed out. Finished. What happened to Neuhauser? Why'd you get timed out? Oh. You timed out fish... Fishy kid? For ten minutes? What did I miss? Uh, everybody knows. Thank you very much for the follow. What was it a link to? Alright, yeah, if it's a fishy link, that's all good. Okay, anyway, back to the... So the Chinese theater is... I guess interesting. I almost don't know what to do with these troops, though, now that I've got, like... The southern front is, is somewhat stabilized. The northern front is in deep shit. Although the one thing working for us is the train in the north isn't great. The problem is we don't have any rail links there in the north to get reinforcements up there. I don't have any money left for the Chinese anyway to do that. I mean, I could retreat this way, I guess. I don't even have the communists on the, on, in the war on my side. What happens if we advance these guys this way? Oh no! Enemy contact! Shit. Well, I just advanced that army into problems. Well, that may have been foolish. We will see what happens. 
I was hoping it could attack over there. I forgot they had already attacked. I wonder what the supply situation is for these guys at Wuho, or Wuhan. They obviously have some supply, but we're nearly catching them in a pincer here. So I imagine the focus of the Japanese attacks in the south are going to be on this army here and this core here. It might have been our army here. It might have been a better idea to kind of stay on the... a little bit more on the defensive. In any event, it is what it is. The Chinese front is getting more fluid uh, with us on the advance, but also potentially overextending ourselves. We will see what comes of it. Uh, meanwhile, the British in India, or in Singapore, the British now have level 2 infantry weapons, which should be very useful. And I am considering an attack on Italy early if we can win the war in North Africa more quickly. But we now have level 2 infantry weapons. We'll load up the Malay Peninsula with that. Hopefully that will thwart any Japanese attack on the, uh, on the peninsula, or at least hinder it. We're going to go ahead and use our artillery here. We can bombard the Africa Corps in... Uh, Benghazi twice. They've already suffered some attrition damage. So our special forces here can do three damage to them. Our infantry corps here can do two more, although it looks like they only did one. And then the Indian or South African corps there was able to finish them off. So we've taken Benghazi. And now we'll advance around the forces at El Aguila. We'll surround them. I only have the armored technology to do one attack, unfortunately. I can't do the two attacks yet. Artillery. We need to move these guys forward here. Can we move the headquarters? I can't. You move them quite to Benghazi. So we'll move these guys into Benghazi. We'll move these guys here. All right. So we're going to move our air units up more close to the front. And that's a good result for us, I think. We'll keep bombing the enemy frontline troops. Benghazi falling hopefully has an impact on Italian morale. Meanwhile, El Aguila, even though we're not doing any actual damage to the troops, we are hurting their morale, so that's a good thing. You can see their morale has plummeted. And we did some supply damage there against them, so that's, that's a positive. Swing these guys in this direction to make them more easy to shield from subs. And there you have it. Uh, Elegela, the Italian troops there, morale is below 20%. Their supply is down to 2. Meanwhile, our subs off the coast of Tripoli are still trying to reduce that port. It's down to 2 in terms of its supply. And I don't think the Germans have the boldness to try and actually go for Alexandria and make a landing in Egypt. I sure hope not because I can't stop it. Meanwhile, uh, Mogadishu's... The garrison is finally out of supply. Now that we sent these warships down here, you can see the port is at level zero. So the Italians at Mogadishu have now that we've moved the navy into support. The Royal Navy has finally ended the Italian hold on East Africa. We have taken the capital of Italian forces down there. I believe the rest will surrender. Uh, if not, then we'll finish them next turn. Finish them. We'll also have a port to draw supply from. And so the nightmare in East Africa is about to be over. Uh, either this turn or next turn with Kismeo will likely fall. And that will also free up an army and two corps, as well as some garrison forces, uh, to move to uh, North Africa and complete the destruction of the Italian forces there, and then threaten the boot in Sicily and Italy. I think we may be able to prepare for a spring offensive against the Germans in Italy. We already destroyed the entire Italian Navy. They have a couple of subs, and the Germans now have deployed a sub to Pola. But at the end of the day, the vast majority of the Italian Navy is gone, uh, and it is only 1941. So a early invasion of Italy certainly is not out of the question at this point. Um, for research, where are the British at? All right, so they've maxed out infantry weapons. They need to spend a little bit more money on advanced tanks. They can build up to level 2 tanks, though. But that's, that's not... The Germans are at 3 already, so we need to spend a little more money there. We're almost to fighters level 3. Armored Warfare Doctrine and Infantry Weapons, we're working on it. Amphib War as well, to support that eventual invasion. Okay, so... 
that'll be that. Meanwhile, the Americans... I guess all this R&D, you know, the other thing I need to think about is when does it make sense to start spending money on things other than R&D, right? Like buying actual units. Um, the Americans, meanwhile, are researching 2100. I wish the Allies could share their research among each other. Anti-submarine warfare. Let's spend a little bit of money there. We had nightmares of that playing as the Axis. And then the Indians... Can they purchase any units right now? Do they have enough money? Anti-air might actually be sneaky, sneaky valuable. Doesn't look like it right now. Um, can India do any diplomacy for us? Not really. Could try and bring Burma into the war, but I don't, I don't know how valuable that would be at this point. Japan's gonna declare war on on them anyway soon. Can we bomb Berlin? No. Bomb Essen. We're gonna bomb Essen, which means our, we're gonna get hit by enemy fighters. A little bit of an air battle there. Two to one. The bombers lose two as well. But they do a little bit of uh, industrial damage uh, to Essen itself. We'll bomb Cologne now. Well, uh, let's go for Cologne. Our uh, heavy bombers here are losing pretty considerable casualties. Wow, three casualties against the German interceptors? That's a good result. All right, can we go for some industrial targets in Belgium with our tactical bombers? These light tactical bombers? Hey, I mean, any, any damage I can do, any damage the British can do against the Germans here... I think is worth it. Even if it's just like damaging their fighters with fighter intercepts, it's going to cause them to spend income and money to repair those units rather than supporting the uh, forces in uh, Russia. And I'm kind of tempted to just throw an army or a corps or something aboard transports and landing in France and, and see what happens. Um, do we know? Do they have anything here at Cherbourg? They do have a garrison unit there. I'm guessing all the, uh, the port ports in France have garrisons. It'd be pretty crazy if they didn't. What would happen if we... There are... Let's set them to mix. Can I, like, attack the actual fighters? Well, my fighter wings on my carriers took a bit of damage there. What if we set these guys? Yeah, that was foolish. Get your fighter wings ravaged. THG will teach you how. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump in and uh, wrap this one up. This was taken, as you could probably tell from a live stream from uh, just the other night. I've been doing that a fair bit uh, on my channel lately, and there were, a lot of, there were quite a few people who came out. Um, not quite the ultimate Admiral Dreadnought numbers, but still, it was a lot of fun, and um, I know I stream at hours that are not super convenient for a lot of you, but if you can make it out, it's always a good time. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, wrap this one up. Uh, we're into September of 1941. The Soviet line continues to hold against the Germans ever so tentatively. Uh, it feels like any moment the Germans are going to just break through and drive all the way to Moscow, but each time uh, they don't quite get there, and, and, and the bulk of our line remains intact. So that's good news for us. Uh, we'll hope that can continue, uh, but we'll pick this up next time as we move ever closer to General Winter's uh, stinging counterattack. Until next time, though, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.